episode 1086 and we are here live in southwest florida in my studio aka dinette inside my rv if you are new to my channel welcome if you are returning thank you for coming back bjorn and i are so happy that you're here happy monday if you uh if it, this is your first time here you may want to know that um predominantly we talk about knitting and crochet and being creative here but you know we're all human beings and we all have a life and sometimes I'm inspired to talk about other ways that I feel creative and positive positive. and so sometimes we talk about other things too like gardening or cooking or living in my RV which is something that may be new to some of you regardless if any of that sounds interesting to you uh, please feel welcome to hit the subscribe button like my videos and always feel welcome to say hello whether we are doing the live chat in a live stream like this or it's a recorded video I get notified from all the comments and I say hello and talk to everybody and answer everybody's questions so uh, that's that hi Joe Angela Grace the uh Judy, Judy, Sharon, another Judy, Angela, Dawn, GH, Joan. Good morning, everybody. Happy Monday. I hope you had a great weekend. Hopefully, you're having a great day so far. Hi, Lori and Melanie. Hi, Sharon. Good morning. Hi, Sean. We'll wait a few minutes before beginning so people have a chance to pop over from pre chat and notifications. Yeah, if you're new to live streams in general, you may not be aware that you can join the pre-chat and chat with everybody in our very friendly and crafty community here up to 30 minutes before I actually go live every day, too. Thank you, Patsy. I appreciate it. I've got baby Bjorn here giving me hugs and kisses. Not kisses, hugs this morning. and That's been very uh, welcoming. to show up. I know it takes a few seconds for people to come over, so we'll, oh, we're already two and a half minutes, I'm sure most people that were going to be here for the beginning are. Hi, Kiki, good morning. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Tammy, good morning. Bjorn's great, Marsha. Bjorn's such a sweetheart. Hi, Nancy, good morning. Hi, Lori, good morning. Uh, El Arte, good morning. Hi, Kathy, good morning. All right. Hi, Naomi, good morning. See, people are still coming in. So I just, I want to make sure that uh, we don't miss some of the super beginner part. Uh, hi, Jackie, good morning. I know people pop in and out throughout the, uh, the show itself, but in the beginning, I just like to slow it down in the beginning if I can. Sometimes I get too excited and start right away, but I know it's better more beneficial to everybody if I wait just a couple of minutes. Uh, okay. All right, so last week, uh, I forget what we were talking about. We were talking about something good. <laughs> and someone mentioned a quote from Picasso. Let me read it so I get it exactly correct. Hi, Val. Learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist. This is a quote from Picasso, and someone brought it up over the uh, last week in one of the episodes. And, um, and um, sorry, I was reading a comment. Uh, someone brought it up a couple of weeks ago, or last week, and, you know, it really reminded me of something that I've thought of for a long time, and I am a rule follower in general, but once you are really familiar with rules, there are certain subject matters that you can really push the envelope when you know the rules and know how to bend them and navigate around them. Like with cooking, once you know the fundamentals of cooking, you can put your own spin on things by knowing the rules well enough to go around them, right? Uh, whether you're putting like here's a good example if you're going to fuse two different types of cooking if you're going to do like an asian italian fusion you know you're going to take some of the rules of italian and some of the rules of asian cooking and you're going to combine them so there's ways that you can once you know the rules like a pro you can oh, let me say it properly again i don't want to offend anybody learn the rules like a pro so you can break them like an artist 
Okay, well, this also applies to knitting and crochet, and it reminded me of a chapter in a book that I wrote many years ago where the whole chapter is really based around that, and to take it even a step further, uh, it's about um, breaking the rules of gauge, and what I thought was so interesting about that is that, you know, most of the time when I talk about gauge, I feel like it's some people are so resistant to talking about gauge and blocking because they don't want to make that extra step that I feel like somehow it ends up having a negative connotation like I'm harping or like I'm being, you know, uh, how would you, even, I don't even know how to say it. It, it comes across, a, oh, you, if you want to the right results, you have to do this. Well, you don't. You can, you can skip gauge and have a mistake at the end and have to unravel back. So even by saying that, it still comes across a little negative if you're not open to doing it. If you're open to doing it, I save people a lot of time and energy and a lot of angst by warning them that if you do this up front, it's an insurance policy to make sure you get the results you want, right? But still, there are some people that are resistant to it, so it really ends up... Uh, it's a bummer that it has to have so much resistance at times. Anyway, I wanted to talk about gauge from a completely different angle today. And if this is something that you've never thought about or never done before, probably going to open up your eyes to thinking about gauge in a whole new light. So, so, so. I know, I know, Tammy, it's not nagging, of course. And I know what I don't come, I don't mean to be negative, but you know what I mean. If you're not open to the concept, you're not open to receiving the information either. And I feel that energy when I know stuff isn't well received. So I thought it might be fun to talk about gauge from another angle where we're not talking about things that fit or don't fit, but how we can actually create really amazing fabrics by breaking the rules of gauge. <laughs> Who wants to talk about breaking the rules of gauge? Anybody? I think it's going to be fun, but I'll wait and see if anybody's interested. And then we'll talk about this cutie right here, because it's the first chapter in this book that I'm going to reference. But who would like to talk about breaking the rules of gauge? <laughs> Lori wants to break the rules with me. Okay, good. I even have some swatches that I whipped up this morning. Angela wants to also. Cool. <laughs> Sharon says yes. Donna, yes. Judy, yes. Uh... Okay, I don't know why you don't see me, El Arte. I'm here all the time. Hi, Dawn, uh, Thea. Okay, yes, all right, so we're gonna go to this book, Crochet So Lovely, if you're not familiar with this book. This is one of my older books. Let me see what year this came out. Um, this book came out 2014. Uh, you can find it on Amazon if you're still interested. It is still available there. Um, and it is a book where I, it's predominantly lace projects and it goes from, there's so many beautiful garments in the book and shawls and ponchos. Oh, this gorgeous trapeze tank top with X stitches. It's really a beautiful book and there's a lot of really cool thinking outside the box kind of things that you can do with lace in here. But chapter one is called Lace by Gage. Okay. It's called Lace by Gage and if you will indulge me, I would like to read the chapter introduction to you because I think it'll give you a real strong flavor for what we're going to talk about within the projects in this chapter and within the swatches that I have set out today. So chapter one, Lace by Gauge. What is lace? To me, it is a pattern composed of the negative space and geometric structuring of a network of crossed paths of string. This can be accomplished in so many ways, from very simple to super complicated. This chapter is an exploration of the truly simple, playing with gauge. Gauge is always critical when making lace. Blocking is mandatory, whether intentional or accidental, right? If you don't do, you do your gauge swatch, once you go to watch your thing, wash your item down the road, you'll find out what the blocked gauge is. It just may not be what you want it to be anymore. So anyway, let's go back to that, uh, whether intentional or accidental. It, okay, sorry. Gauge is always critical when making lace. Blocking is mandatory, whether intentional or accidental. 
it will relax your gauge. Using oversized hooks for the weight of your yarn will, accident, will accentuate the relaxing of your gauge in the blocking. Using simple stitches and oversized hooks gives you a remarkable lace structure after blocking, and often it makes it difficult to recognize otherwise common stitches. Okay, oh, there's the cover, there's the back cover, there's some more of the projects inside the book. All right, so the point in saying all that is it doesn't have to be a complicated stitch pattern. What if the only stitches you know are single crochet and double crochet? Let's, let's say you only know single crochet. You can still make lace. You can still make a gorgeous lace fabric, even if all you know is single crochet. Here's an example for you. I'm going to show you these three examples in the book. I think it's three. And then I'll show you really close-up examples of the swatches that I made this morning. So this is called the Simply Sparkly Tunic, and this top is made exclusively in single crochet. However, it uses three different yarns. On one round, it's done in a number four worsted weight yarn, and the hook size is appropriately sized for the number four worsted weight yarn on that round, okay? Then the following round is done in lace weight yarn in the same hook, and it gives you that extra negative space so that it looks like stripes. It looks like lace stripes. Okay, there's a picture here that I think shows it the best. Can you see, can you see how it looks like stripes? You've got your solid stripe from the number four worsted weight yarn, and then you have the more open work where you use the same hook, whoops, my bra's hanging out, where you use the same hook, but a much thinner yarn, so you get that textural difference. And while this isn't super duper lacy, the next example will be, uh, while it's not super du duper lacy, can you see how you can take any simple pattern, I don't care if it's a garment, I don't care if it's a shawl, a scarf, a cowl, whatever, you can create that texture of a lace stripe just by playing with different weights yarn different weights of yarn with the same hook does that make does that make sense to everybody and is this something you've thought of before or is this something you haven't thought of before that would be my next question as well because it'd be exciting if this is your first time thinking about it Oh, great, Donna. I'm so glad this is your first time hearing about it. Joe says it makes sense. Great. Judy says it makes sense. Wonderful. Ah, Angela never thought about it. Great. Neither has Sharon. Wonderful. I'm so glad that we're having this conversation today. Then. Does that just open up your mind to so many other possibilities? Like you can take any pattern you have right now. You don't even need a pattern. You can just pick up your yarn, pick up two different, very different weights of yarn, let's say a number one and a number four, and even in this project, it's done in the same color family, so it's that much more subtle. You could do it in high contrast colors, and that's a whole different look as well, but really, really subtle and interesting in the same color as well. You could also, let's say you don't have two different weights of yarn at home. Let's say you only have fingering weight yarn, or you only have lace weight yarn. What you could also do is do one strand for the thin row, and then do three or four strands for the thick row, right? Or if you have like DK weight yarn, you could use uh, one strand for the thin row and two or three strands for the thick row. It doesn't matter. As long as you're doing the same hook size and the hook has to be appropriately sized for the larger gauge or the, the larger weight yarn, then when you use a thinner yarn alternate, alternatively, <laughs> alternately with the thicker yarn, you'll get a negative space between those stitches and it creates that negative space or defining lace. It also loosens up your gauge a little bit too. So if you're having a, if you're not liking the drape of the fabric, it might feel a little too stiff and you want something a little more drapey, this will definitely add to the drapiness of your fabric as well. So you could do this with any pattern that you already have that's done in simple stitches or just go play with some yarn and the hook 
and you, I promise you, you could make a scarf, a wrap, an afghan, anything you want, and get this amazing result. Whether you use single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, doesn't matter. You can get that stripe and lace effect from just playing with, you know, push, pushing the boundaries or breaking the rules of gauge, right? We say we use an appropriately sized hook. Well, I'm saying use an appropriately sized hook for one of the yards that you're using, but use that same hook inappropriately for the other one and you'll get this result, okay? I would, and then we'll talk about the next pattern, which is completely different rule breaking. Well, similar, but different, but let's make sure there aren't any questions about this first. Okay, I don't see any questions, so I'm gonna keep going. So the next pattern here is called the Orchid Faroe Shawl, and this one uses number one finger, or no, number one fingering weight yarn, but it also uses a six millimeter or J10 crochet hook, single crochet only. Doesn't that look like lace to you? Doesn't that look like lace? Right, look at that. That is single crochet through the back loop only and a way too big of a hook size for the weight of the yarn. Now, there are other things going on here. I end up using an appropriately sized crochet hook to do this edging at the bottom to really play with the juxtaposition of blowing out the lace and then showing it appropriately. But can you see the beautiful negative space here? and the drape is just out of this world. See, I think this is the best picture for showing it to you. I'll show you all the pictures. So here's the shawl, and then the shawl actually has an interesting construction as well. Here's the schematic. So there is a gusset here that's worked back and forth in short rows, and then these two half triangle, or these two triangles are joined with the gusset to create the half circle, and then you add the edging at the bottom. This part is done with the over, over, oversized crochet hook. And then this part is done with the appropriately sized crochet hook, which is why you're able to see that amazing contrast. But can you see how open that is and the structure of it? Would you ever guess that that is just single crochet? No, of course not. It just looks like a lace stitch pattern that has a really unusual and woven texture. You might not even guess that that part is crochet. You might even guess that it's knit or woven or something because you're blowing out the stitches so much that you really just see the strands of the yarn and you're not quite sure what it's doing, right? And one of the downsides to doing this or one of the one of the steps that you would need to learn with this is that when you do use oversized hooks with thin yarn, often it's hard to recognize your stitches until you get going. So there's a little bit of a learning curve to doing that. And I'll show you on some swatches that I have here today. But again, this is an amazing way to take simple stitches and do something extraordinary. Now, we can even tie this into crochet power. Let's go to the first, let's go to the first stitch pattern in here. If you already have crochet power, let's just go to the simple single crochet. You can, use a way oversized hook with any thin yarn and well, even in rows can be an amazing rectangular wrap, scarf or uh, afghan, right? Even in rounds could be an amazing lacy looking cowl for a lightweight cowl. Shawls all day long with a top down increasing triangle. You could apply this with this, like let's say you're gonna use a number two sport, sport weight yarn. Use a K 6.5 millimeter hook or an L eight millimeter hook. Like you could go really exaggerated oversized and get this amazing lace look. You know what I mean? You already have all the tools here to do it. And then you could even do motifs or you could do uh, squares of any kind, a poncho, a lightweight poncho. Just really amazing how you could really use this to your advantage to then take whatever patterns you have these patterns, these patterns, whatever patterns you already have 
and you can make something completely different out of them that way. Isn't that wonderful too? It's This is a way for you to bring new life to your old patterns that you already own and love and maybe have used in different ways and just do them in a different way as well, which I think is really cool <laughs> and a great way to save your money too. Okay, let's see. I will wait to see if there's any questions about that because then there is a third example of doing this type of work in, in uh, Crochet So Lovely, so I'll show you that next. Hi, Geraldine. good morning. Are there any questions? Yep, the same thing applies to knitting. Yes, yes, if all you know how to do is simple stitches and knitting, absolutely. If all you know is garter stitch, and if you don't know garter stitch, go take my introduction to knitting uh, course number one, and you can learn garter stitch and simple stitches there to work back and forth, even in rows. And you can do that with lace yarn and thicker knitting needles and make amazing lace too. Garter stitch looks amazing oversized in lace like that. So does seed stitch. Um, just amazing. Let's see. All right, so my, I'm going to show you a third example in the book, and then we'll go over to our swatches here. So this one, in this one, this would absolutely apply to Tunisian crochet too. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so this is called the Rustica Capelet, and this one is done in a single lace weight yarn and an 8 millimeter crochet hook. And what are these? Really simple double crochet motifs with a chain mesh for joining them to the other motifs, right? Can you even imagine how thin and lightweight this is using lace weight yarn with an eight millimeter hook? And as a garment, is it not just gorgeous anyway? It's gorgeous. It's absolutely gorgeous. And it's light as a feather because it's such a thin yarn. And the drape, oh, just amazing, just amazing. And then you get that contrast of the, you know, it's tighter, the stitches are closer together in the circular uh, medallion here and then further apart in the chain spaces but again this is lace weight yarn with an eight millimeter hook to give you that amazing blown out texture and you'd never guess that would you I don't think you'd guess that from there but look at how simple that is super simple super super simple okay so that's just one of the chapters here we could always come back and do a deep dive into more of those chapters as well because i feel like i did push the envelope in several of the chapters that one specifically obviously i really pushed the envelope in that chapter uh, but again whether you have that book or want that book there's a link to buy it or you want to apply these rules to whatever you have it's all good it's all good uh oh there goes baby bjorn bye honey all right so i did some swatches this morning with a K crochet hook, size K is, uh, it's also called a 10 and a half. It's also called 6.5 millimeter. If anybody wants a deep dive and understanding the names and numbers on these, we can do that another day as well. Uh, but however you call them, it's K 10 and a half or 6.5 millimeter, okay? So with that hook, I did a couple of swatches of 13 single crochets worked back and forth in rows. Here's what it looks like in a number four worsted weight yarn pretty normal, right? We've got a me medium amount of drape to it. It's a fairly opaque fabric, meaning that there aren't a whole lot of holes. Maybe a little bit more if we really stretched it up, but overall it's, it's a pretty normal looking single crochet swatch, wouldn't you say? So then I did that same swatch in number six bulky weight yarn. Now we're talking thick, dense, I see a rug here, I see a pot holder, I see something that could be really dense and either be really functional for being dense or you could make a basket. Like if you go down in your hook size, you have benefits as well. It's not lace, but it still benefits, right? So this is a six, uh, this is a number six super bulky yarn and the yarn label recommends an eight millimeter or L11 crochet hook. And I did it with six and a half and I could probably even go a little tighter if I really wanted a dense fabric. But like, look at, you know those are gonna, st that's gonna stand up if I wanted to make a basket out of it, right? So you can play with gauge in both directions. You can go inappropriately too big of a hook and you can go inappropriately 
too tight, too small of a hook to create different looks and different functionalities within any yarn. I don't care if it's natural. I don't care. Uh, this isn't acrylic, Karen. This is recycled uh, polyester, but yeah, you, yeah. Um, anyway, that's not the point. I'm just trying to talk about the gauge today, but yes, there are certain, there are certain fabrics and certain fibers that are good and bad for any given project, right? Or any, or good and bad for any given, uh, I unraveled a few stitches here. Let me, just, oh, I should probably show you this anyway. So here again is that same 13 stitch single crochet swatch, but in number two, sport weight yarn. And I'm going to show you something. This is the same swatch, same number of stitches. There it is right off the hook. And then in once it's blocked, you can see it will open up. I can go wet it down if you don't believe me, but you can see how that's going to real. Doesn't that look like a mesh? Now, if you were brand new at crochet, you wouldn't know how to make a mesh. If you only know single crochet, I'm telling you, you can make something look completely different by do it by breaking these rules. Isn't that amazing? This is the same thing as this is the same thing as this. 13 stitches, single crochet, 13 stitches, single crochet, 13 stitches, single crochet. Now, this one is not going to change too much by the reaction of water to the fiber. This one will change a little bit. It will relax a little bit. This one's going to react, react a ton when it gets wet because see how much give is in there? See how, see how loose that is? So when it relaxes with water, it's going to do this. And I'll even show you. I'm going to see if I can come in front of the camera. I'll turn this around so I can see what I'm doing too. Because I want to show you. Oh, it's not going to work. My, my camera is delayed. But it's a little harder to find your stitches in this too, which is why I'm saying it might involve, you know, you might have to really study where the top of your stitch is, right? So it's not really as obvious here as when the yarn is more appropriately sized to the hook because it's so loose and exaggerated. But if you, uh, so here's the, here's what's facing me. I can't even get on camera. And then I want to lift up to find that top V, right? If you're already familiar with the anatomy of your stitches, you can search to find it on here. And then I'm going to insert my hook under that top V to single crochet in that space. And just like with anything else, of course, it gets easier the more you practice, right? But if you're used to yarns being appropriately sized for your hook, or your hook being appropriately sized for your yarn, um, there is a little bit of a learning curve when going super big in the hook or knitting needles to uh, thinner yarn because it'll be so loose and exaggerated that the anatomy of the stitch is a little distorted. But like I said, it's so worth learning and so worth getting better at because the of the the effects are so beautiful. Does anybody have any questions? I'll wait and see if there's any questions. Because if this is new to you, I know it's a lot. It's simple, but it's still a lot. <laughs> and all I can suggest to you and invite to you is just try. There's nothing to lose, right? Nothing to lose. If you don't like your results, unravel it and do something else with it. But if you've never done this before, I really do believe that it opens up your possibilities to making so many other types of things. And it's just nice to know that even as many options that we may have, which I know we have a time, what well, we've got a, a million choices of patterns. We've got a million choices of yarns. Uh, hundreds of thousands of choices of teachers. Like we have so, so, so many choices already. And what the heck, here's another choice. <laughs> Thank you, Grace. Thank you. Thank you, Judy. All right. If you are on my mailing list, you are going to get a very exciting email from me in the next couple of days. If you are not on my mailing list, I highly recommend subscribing to my mailing list. It's simple. Just share your uh, information with me. It's 100% private, 100% free, and I will be sending out a super fun announcement in the next couple of days that you're going to love. Otherwise, um, 
if you are not aware of, maybe you're new, maybe you haven't been here for a while, every Tuesday is Giving Tuesday and we do a crochet along every Tuesday where we work on patterns that I dedicate to raising money for awareness of domestic violence and helping survivors of domestic violence. So if you haven't already uh, decided if you wanna join me tomorrow, tomorrow we will be doing another Giving Tuesday episode and I would love for you to join me if you can you uh is my new book done it's in the editing process so we are i'm done creating it but i am not done getting it ready for market so we're just working on the behind the scenes stuff now but it is definitely coming along and it will be out soon thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me i hope you enjoyed this show i hope you enjoyed chatting with me and everyone else and talking about this interesting subject if you haven't already subscribed, please click that red button and subscribe to my channel so that you can always know when I have new content to share with you. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. I'll see you tomorrow.